I'm Dan Van, Field Service Technician for Westmore Industries, and today we're going to go over a monthly site inspection. For the inspection today, we're going to want some PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. That includes a high-vis vest, gloves, both nitrile and regular, cones, kneeling pad, a hook, and maybe a crowbar and a screwdriver if you don't have handles on your lids. There are two main parts to the inspection. There's the tank field and the dispensers, and we're going to start with the dispensers. So with the dispenser, we have the external and then internal on the sumps. So we'll start from the top and work our way down. First, you want to look at the whip hose, which is at the very top. Look at where it connects to the breakaway. If you see it's really dirty or really gunky, you might want to have it cleaned or even replaced. Then the next part is going to be the breakaway. What you're going to want to look for is if it's got any cracks, but also look at where it connects to the hose and where it connects to the whip hose. So look for any weeping or seeping. If your customers have been complaining about you know, a leaky nozzle or a leaky hose, it actually might come from up here at the breakaway, which is designed to break. Next thing we're going to look at is the hose itself. Look at the hose along the whole width of it, and you're looking for any cracks or tearing. And if you see that stuff, you're going to want to replace it. Because if an inspector shows up and they see cracks or leaking hoses, they're going to call you out on it right away. So you might as well just get rid of it as soon as you see it. So you follow it all the way down. And this one's looking really good. OK, the next thing you want to look at is the swivel, which is connected to the nozzle itself. Not just for cracks around where it's connected to the hose itself and where it's connected to the nozzle, but also at the swivel joint itself. You want to make sure the swivel is actually swiveling. Sometimes they get so old and full of gunk that it, it's really difficult to move them. You can operate with it, but it's a lot easier for your customers. It makes it a nicer fueling experience for them if it actually is swiveling around. If you see some moisture, that a little bit's okay, but if it's, if it's an active drip or your customers are complaining, like I said, if, you're, if you grab this with your gloves and you see liquid or, or wetness, there's some sort of seeping or weeping going on and you might want to have it replaced. Okay, the next thing you're looking at is the nozzle itself. When I picked this nozzle up, you might have noticed that a little bit of it came out. That's pretty normal. Sometimes the stem here just gets filled up with a little bit of gas as you're hanging it up or whatever. Someone hangs it up really fast. But if it's actively dripping, that's a problem. There's something broken in the mechanism of the nozzle. So this one's looking pretty dry, looks good. Um, and it, you know, it's clean. If you notice a really dirty nozzle, just clean it up. Grab some of this, you know, grab a, a little bit of your um, paper towel here, dip it in the window washing fluid and just kind of clean it up a little bit, make it look nice for your customers. Now let's look at the dispenser itself. You want to look up top at where the whip hose is again, make sure that there's no leaks coming from there. Look for any cracks, dings, dents, maybe from a, a truck that might have hit the dispenser on accident. That can cause issues internally. But then look at, let's look at the face. This is what the customers are going to see. You want to look at the displays the windows that have all the information on how much the gallons are or what you're getting. If you see any little cracks along the edges, a crack like that can allow water to seep into the dispenser and mess with the electronics. So you don't want to have any of that. Uh, the next thing you want to look at is where the uh, card reader is and where the encrypted pin pad is. Make sure there's no obvious breaks or anything. The next thing we're going to go down to is what's called the PPU or price per unit displays. These little displays that say how much it costs for the fuel. What inspectors are looking for here is that if it has lights uh, lighting up the back of it, that the lights are activated. And you can kind of see if you just cover it with your hand and shadow it if, it, if you can still visibly see all the digits. Also, sometimes uh, over time, these digits kind of uh, lose a, a couple of their little pieces and it makes it hard to tell what the prices and you're going to want to get that replaced as soon as you can because that's what the inspectors are looking for. And then besides that, for the external, um, you're just looking for general spills or anything on the concrete that's going to tell you that you have a leak somewhere. But so far, um, this side is looking good. So you want to do that for every hose, every side. And then the next thing that we're going to do is look inside the sump. So what you're going to need is your keys for the dispenser, 
and we're gonna start with taking off the bottom door. This can be kind of tricky, so you're definitely gonna wanna have your gloves so you don't scrape your hands. You turn the key, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands over the top, lift it up, and pull it out. I have all these hoses in the way. You can actually pull these out, pull them off to the side to make it easier for the inspection. So now that we got the hoses out of the way, we can look into the sump at this point, but if you want more room, you can actually open up the top door as well to give you a little more space. So to do that, there's a little latch on the bottom left side that we have to just pull open. You unlatch it like that, and now it'll make the door open up. And there's all the electronics inside the cabinet. Don't worry about that. We're not really needing to look at that. Um, but if you see a lot of debris or bugs or spider webs, it would be a good idea to grab some paper towel and just kind of wipe them away. So now we're looking in the sump here. To make it easier on yourself, grab your kneeling pad, plop it down, and then we're gonna take a look. So what we're looking here is we're looking at where the filters are, looking for any leaks on the piping. Uh, look at the piping going down into where it connects to the shear valves. The shear valves are these big uh, connectors on the bottom that uh, are designed to shear off if the dispenser gets hit. In this particular sump, this is a, an older site, so they, they don't have a, a plastic sump for containment, but you can still do the inspection here. I see a bunch of spider webs and stuff all here. I'll clean that out to make it easier to do filter changes and stuff and just kind of keep it clean. Um, but basically, you're just looking for any sort of leaks, uh, any sort of debris, and uh, if it looks clean, then you can check it off your list. Now that we're finished with the basic inspection of the inside at the sump, you can close up the dispenser. This can be easy or it can be tricky, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. So now that if you opened up the top door, over here there's a little latch that you have to press up on, and then it'll close easily. Now that we have it against the dispenser, sometimes the key won't wanna latch on. So you can lift up on the dispenser door itself and turn the key as you are pressing into it. That can be a little tricky. You can also use your knee to help you with that. Then, underneath, you wanna make sure you relatch the door. After you've latched the door, now we can put on the bottom door. Do one tab at a time, put your boot on it, hook it onto the tab, and do the same thing with the other one. You can also use your hands, I just like using my boots. So now that we got it on the tabs, we gotta put it on these hooks. So we're gonna do the reverse of what we did to take it off. So press it up against the dispenser, lift up and push in. And then once you have it in, pull it down, close, it with, close the key, and you got it closed. So what we're gonna do is go into each one of these lids, open them up, look inside for any debris or liquid that we see, clean it up if we can, and uh, report it if we can, write it down on the sheet. Th this big circle is where the motor sits on the tank, so we're gonna lift that up. So to do that, a lot of these tanks have the lids that you can uh, lift up with a handle, but just lifting it up with your hand is a little tough sometimes, so that's where the hook comes into play. So I hook, the lid handle like that, and then you just lift off and then pull away. Sometimes these handles are gone and you still gotta get in to do the monthly inspection. If you look around the edges of the lid, there's usually a spot that is open, has a little chip out of it with a little steel plate on there. That's for using a crowbar. Then that should reveal either the motor itself, like in this situation, or another lid. If you see the second lid, that's gonna be for the actual uh, containment sump itself. Then you lift up on that, and you can use the hook again if it doesn't have a handle, and just hook around the, the outsides of it to lift off the lid. But in this situation, we can see the STP clearly. It's looking good. We don't see any uh, weeping or seeping. Um, but if we were looking in a containment sump and we saw liquid in there, we'd wanna clean that up uh, either with uh, a, some sort of a absorbent rag or suck it out with a, 
uh, a hand pump, but this is looking pretty good, so we'll just put the lid back on and we'll move on to the next two lids. Most of the time, in the middle is where the probe is located, which is what tells the tank monitor how much fuel is in there. So to get this one open, uh, you just use a screwdriver or anything that you have to lift up on the lid and reveal it. Well, sometimes you can't get in there because it's so like clogged up with dirt. So what you do is get a hammer. I just use this little mini sledge. And what you're gonna do is pound on it once and at the same time, it's gonna bounce the lid up and you're gonna slide in your screwdriver. There we go. Okay, so I got it. This is looking pretty good. But what we're looking for in this middle one where the probe is, is uh, any cracks in the riser pipe itself that might cause liquid to pour into the tank. Um, I'm not seeing any visible leaks, but it's still a good idea to brush away any debris from the probe cap itself. So that way, when they do their yearly functionality testing, uh, or maybe the probe goes out, at least they see where the probe cap is and then you can have easier access to unscrewing it. Okay, so when we open up the fill lid, this is where the bulk truck drivers drop fuel. You're gonna look for inside the containment sump if it's got any debris, clean that out. But also you're looking for the tank tags, make sure that that's clearly uh, visible so you know what kind of fuel is in here and that the tank drivers know what kind of fuel is in here. This is pretty clear so I can tell it's just kind of rainwater. So that typically will evaporate, but cleaning it out is a good idea if it's a lot. This is pretty normal for what you would see in the sun. After you look at that and it's all cleaned up, then you wanna put the lid back on and move on to the next tank. That concludes the monthly inspection. This is a tool that you can use for preventative maintenance so that you can call your service company and get assistance in changing things before they become an issue. You can call us at Westmore Industries and we're always willing to help you, even if you're not in our area. If you have questions at all on the site, we can help you with that. That's what we're here for.